that they lack certain enzymes to break down the fava beans. It's called a G6PD deficiency. I know it's too technical for, for you, and I don't want to do it to you, but the fact is you can get very sick eating fava beans. It's equivalent to acute hemolytic anemia. And you say you don't know what that is. I'm showing you what can happen when you eat certain foods that you're not aware, you're not even able, able to digest. For example, it's well known that Jews, most Jews, most blacks, and most Asians cannot digest dairy products directly because they are deficient in the enzyme necessary to break down milk, the milk product known as lactose or milk sugar. Jews, black people, and Asians are uh, have very low amounts of lactase, so they are to avoid dairy. Did you know that? So the medical profession, instead of telling Jews, black people, and Asians don't eat dairy, they tell them take a pill with lact, uh, you know, some lactate in it. The trick would be to avoid the dairy. Now, why would Jews, blacks, and Asians have uh, evolved? or adapted to a low, low, uh, low dairy diets, because there weren't high dairy diets in their traditional environs. There were just not high dairy diets. Basically, there weren't high dairy diets, so they adapted to not eating dairy, and they didn't develop the enzymes necessary to break down milk sugar. We're living in interesting times where each man literally has to save himself. We have no authority figures to believe in. We have no government to believe in. That's why I wrote Government Zero, and it's not an infomercial. And I made a commitment, which I should repeat right now. Any and all royalties I make on that book will be given to my Savage Scholarship Fund for deserving college students going forward. That will be one of the things I leave as my legacy after my radio career. Savage. Here's the Pawn Cop Pipe and a button nose and two eyes made out of coal. Many of you believe in raw foods because you're ignoramuses and you think that you're an ant or a rat or some kind of animal in the, in the plains. That's absurd. The fact is, is that you should eat cooked foods. You're a human being. It doesn't mean you shouldn't eat some vegetables or fruits that aren't cooked. But to, to think you should eat only raw foods is ludicrous. It's lunacy. It's another part of the folklore of the, uh, of the uh, psychologically de deficient liberal to think that raw foods are better for you. It's the equivalent of uh, thinking that a gigantic bird will come from the sky and bring you back to uh, to paradise. But actually, I want to talk about food instead. And that is the issue of uh, how ethnic foods are very important, uh, both to know what to eat and what not to eat. I'm, I'm coming up with something uh, very, very small here. It's called fava bean hemolysis. And there are people who cannot eat fava beans because they lack the correct enzyme to break down fava beans and what happens is what happens the urine becomes very dark or red shock may develop in bad cases and death can follow did you know that this condition is caused by a lack of glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase that's a that's an enzyme that breaks down the fava bean g6pd you don't have g6pd if you are a curd for example people were warned that eating this type of bean could yield death well i don't want to go into it because it's too complicated Maybe you've learned something. But here is another example of the classic one man's meat is another man's poison. And we can all learn from this. And remember not to put down our friends who may find some of our most magical food combinations totally repugnant. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. I am trapped between things, so many different things, politically, emotionally, just trapped. So play stuck between whatever. Clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right, here I am stuck in the middle. Clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right. Yes, I'm, I'm not exactly the man in the middle in that regard. But I am, in a way, like all men, somewhere between heaven and the other place. And every day I wake up and say, how do I get to the other place without crossing the river? <laughs> I mean, that's really life itself when you think about it. We all want to get to that other 
to this place called heaven, rather. We don't want to go to the other place. How do we get to heaven without crossing the river? That's the question. So many of us try visionary experiences with drugs. We try mescaline, LSD, uh, allegedly drugs that take us to heaven. But often the streets are littered with the exact opposite. If you look at Berkeley, California, you see people wandering around blowing bubbles who were left of us in the 1960s. They tried to achieve visionary experiences with LSD and mescaline, and they wound up in the gutter. But if you look at religions, if you look at the great paintings of history, you will see visions of heaven. Visionary heaven, fairylands, folklore, religion are all about heaven, aren't they? Our dream for a new government in America, which will allegedly give us relief from the hell that this man has put us in, is just another dream. We want that light. We want that unnatural intensity of coloring. We want that n unnatural significance of the golden age. We want the golden age. That's what we want. We want a shining to come down to us. We want significant light to shine down upon us, to come down out of the skies, uh, out of the landscape, to bring beauty to us, in other words. So this is not new to our time. If you go back to the uh, ancient traditions, every religion, every tradition, you find this dream of the Garden of Eden. The Greek or Roman tradition, you find the Garden of the Hesperides, the Elysian Plain. The fair island of Luke, to which Achilles was translated. Now, I may mispronounce some of these places, but I know what I'm talking about. I have an amazing education and an amazing memory. Forgive me for slipping into this in the midst of this pragmatic talk about uh, the situation that we are in and the world is in right now. But really what it comes down to is how do we get away from hell and go back to heaven, the relative heaven of this world before uh, the Cyclops took over the White House. It's like a Cyclops took over the White House. But every time and in every place, people were dreaming of this light-filled paradise. Islands. We all love islands. I don't. I've spent too many years in them to know that they're not paradise. Not paradise at all. In fact, if you live on an island long enough, you realize it's a prison. See, most of the things that we dream are heavenly turn out to be prisons at the end of the day. But that, that's a philosophical statement. And I'm not really going somewhere with this with a specific conclusion about vote for, you know, Mac Jones or anything like that. I'm just kind of uh, talking to the Hotel Savage. But we're talking about this magic that we all want, these magical, lovely islands in the folklore of America. But they exist in the ancient Celts and the Japanese. Wherever you go, there's always this magical land the other world of the Hindus, the land that we read about in the Ramayana, which is watered by lakes and with golden lotuses, rivers, beautiful rivers, uh, blessed by the morning sun, adorned by golden beds of red lotus, wherever you go, whatever the language, whatever the civilization, whatever the people, whatever the society, the same characteristics appear. V common to virtually all of the religions and all of the peoples, except one. A dream of paradise without killing. Not a dream of raping virgins in the next world, but a paradise on this earth. A paradise that most people can understand. And unless you have a philosophical understanding of the enemy, you're never going to defeat them. Unfortunately, the people in the military who have a philosophical understanding of the enemy have been rooted out by Mr. Hussein Obama. Mr. Hussein Obama and his minions have thrown everyone out of the military who know exactly what the enemy thinks and exactly what the enemy uh, is about and exactly what the enemy, and the vulnerabilities of the enemy, rather. They've all been rooted out of the military and out of the intelligence agencies. And so you see my little discussion here on the savage nation is not so insignificant after all, is it? But I'm just talking is all I'm doing. I have no power whatsoever. Influence, maybe. I don't know. I doubt it. I have no influence. Think of all the community organizers. Think of those funded by George Soros. Think of all of the brain trusts in the media. They have the influence, not me. Take a look at the average cow walking around in America. A cows, like cows would have more sense, more common sense. A cow that hears his neighbor cow dying in a slaughterhouse would have more sense than the average American on vacation. 
walking around bloated, 300 pounds, 350 pounds, varicose veins bursting in their legs, blue veins in their arms as they lick the ice cream cones, devouring everything edible and inedible in sight, click, click, picture, picture, click, click, go up the hill, go down the hill. Have we got that yet? Let's go to the art museum. Take a picture of every picture. We got that. We saw that. We saw this. We saw that. Let's devour that. Let's devour this. Click, click. Take that. Varicose veins bursting in their legs. Click, click. Clack, clack. Clackety, clack. Don't talk back. I really like talking about heaven and you know where the other place and how all of us uh, dream of this heaven. And it goes back to the ancient worlds, Greek, Roman, Celts. Teutons, everybody believes of this wondrous world and these paradises, these paradises that we all want, the New Jerusalem. We all want the New Jerusalem, don't we? Don't we all want the New Jerusalem? You find them in the literature of Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, and why? What are they all looking for? And by the way, that was classical Islam before it was distorted by Wahhabi Islam, what we're facing now is the curse of Wahhabism, which is a new form of Islam, the most virulent form ever invented. Because there was a time that Islam was re relatively peaceful. It was not always like this. There were times in history when Islam got along with its neighbors. But not anymore. Not anymore. So man constantly seeks heaven. Man constantly tries to heaven, whether it's been in his own house, car. Let's say you buy a car. I'm going to talk about heaven and you know where, the other place, for a few minutes. I have to do this for a while, only because I want to. I realize it's out of the can of talk radio. After all, we are just knuckle-dragging uh, right-wing conservatives. We don't know anything about literature, nothing about religion, nothing about history. No, no, that's only known by Thomas Friedman, the stooge, Obama's mouthpiece of the New York Times. They're the literate ones. Only liberals are the literate ones. Why, those of us on the other side of the aisle can have no education whatsoever, no knowledge whatsoever. They're the knowledgeable ones. So I will then, in my own way, try to explain to you what, I, where, what I'm talking about and where I'm coming from here on the Savage Nation. Let's start with the simple. I'm a champion for America's borders, language, and culture. The Savage Nation, Michael Savage, borders, language, culture. Does that immediately exclude me from the paradise the liberals have created for themselves? Well, I would hope not, since every nation through history has been defined by a border, by its common language, and by its culture. But not in America. We bomb others to preserve their borders, their language, and their culture. But we erase our borders and bastardize our language and decimate and spit upon our own culture. How is that possible? Well, it's an example of what happens when a nation has an autoimmune disease. I've explained this to you before. I've done it many times for many years. Remember, I'm the master chess player of ideas on the radio, whether you know it or not. I realize my accent sounds like that of a truck driver from from uh, Brooklyn. doesn't matter. If you can get past your own bias and prejudice, you may realize that some truck drivers are smart. Some of them know more than you do, even though you may have a degree in something or other. I'll be right back. Savage. Now, I myself, I'm an immigrant son, and I gave a little talk last summer off the Hudson River in New York. So let's listen to it now, Robert, please. Is there anyone down below who should be up here that we can browbeat for a few minutes? A <laughs> hundred years ago, my grandfather arrived at Ellis Island in Steerage. Many of you have a similar story. Maybe it was more, more than a hundred years ago for you. I'm, I'm a first-generation American, so I have one foot in the old world and one foot in the new world. So when I talk about immigration, I sort of know what I'm talking about. So last night, we went to dinner in chun -Li with my agent, Ian. Come back, didn't say a word in the cab. The, getting out, I'm paying the guy or whatever. <clears throat> he says, are you Michael Savage? He was a Haitian immigrant. You Michael Savage? <laughs> he said, I'm like your grandfather. I rather have my arm cut off than take welfare. See, people don't understand how diverse diversity really is. They assume that it's fractured in this country, that blacks think one way, Hispanics think another way, whites think another way. But we have all these divisions within my grandfather, Sam, who I call the astronaut of my family, 
It was as though he went to the moon. Look where he came. Didn't speak a word of English. 